Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fan Dummies. I'm Aaron. And I'm Greg. Today, we are going to talk about Netflix's Umbrella Academy Season 2. Woohoo! First, we are going to recap where Season 1 left off, talk about all the new characters, we are going to discuss what we liked and didn't like, and then speculate about the ending and Season 3. Our patrons are going to learn if any of the scenes were real places in 1960s Dallas. What? I can't like did, wait. Like, did they actually go back in time and film it? Yes, of course. What? Well, come on. Now there's no reason for people to subscribe to our Patreon. Oh. <laughs> Oops. I can't wait for, for that segment. It's going to be fun. <laughs> if you're new to Fan Dummies, we talk about superheroes, science fiction, and fantasy, TV, and movies every week. Hit that subscribe button to join the Fan Dummies family. Smash that subscribe button. So I'm getting used to the YouTube thing. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, which many thousands of you are, and only very few are watching the video, <laughs> <laughs> at least at recording this one, go to YouTube, give us a subscribe, and you can uh, see what we're talking about. You can see what we look like. Well... You can see all the cool collectibles that are behind me. Nothing behind Greg. That's right. I talk loud, so I need all the sound deadening. There's a new Baby Yoda above me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. New acquisition. Be yo yo new acquisition. (laughs) I can't hold it because it like coos like a kid. It's really creepy, actually. (laughs) Are you ready to get into Umbrella Academy? I am. Let's do it. Umbrella Academy is a Netflix original series about a family of former child heroes, now grown apart, must reunite to continue to protect the world. Season 1 aired February 15th of 2019, but today we're talking all about Season 2, which just came out July 31st of 2020. Yeah, and don't fret, if you want to hear more about Season 1, just check out Fandummy's episode 89, where we go in-depth about Umbrella Academy Season 1. It was super fun, and we'll put the link in the description below. If you remember the last episode in Season 1, Vanya is playing her violin at a concert and growing more and more powerful. Her siblings try to stop her, but almost get killed. Yeah, and this is a tribute to the comic because she's all in her white outfit, and her comic book name is The White Violin. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm, It's cool. Eventually, Allison whispers something in Vanya's ear, and she arches her back and shoots an energy beam in the sky. And if you've heard our podcast before, Greg likes to reference it as the naval laser. Yeah, from My Hero Academia, (laughs) because it looked like that. I always wonder what Vanya whispers in her ear. I don't think think you hear it. I don't know. (laughs) Unfortunately, she hit the moon. And kills all life on Earth. Yeah, the moon actually disintegrates and falls down onto the Earth. The funny part is we went to watch season two, (laughs) and I accidentally started the last episode of season one. And we were watching it, you know, because it's been a while since we'd seen it. So we were watching it, and we were both like, this looks ridiculously familiar. Are they starting off season two? with like an alternate version of the season one ending, (laughs) that would be wild. Because if you remember, uh, five kind of teleports them away and we don't really know where they go. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe five just moved them back in time, like an hour or something. And then we're watching it and we were noticing things that we didn't notice in the, the first time around. And we were both like, like, oh, no, this is definitely new. I don't remember <laughs> any parts of this. This is totally new. It wasn't. It's embarrassing. <laughs> we, we we watched about a half an hour before we were like, okay, we are stupid. This is <laughs> this is totally the last episode. And But then we decided to watch it, finish it anyway, as like a recap. Totally worth it. Go back and watch the last episode. We did it by accident. It totally enhanced the first episode of season two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the end of that last episode in season one is 
just great. It's like, really I love good. It. Yeah. Well, Greg, do you want to recap the Umbrella Academy members real quick just to make sure everyone is caught up? Yeah, I'm going to do it fast because this is not supposed to be a season one recap. And if you've watched season one, you know all of these folks. Mm-hmm. But but just in case, let's just buzz through them real quick. So we have Luther, who's number one. He looks like a gorilla. He's got the top half of a gorilla. He's got super strength, enhanced durability, and ape-like physiology. He's played by Tom Hopper. You've seen him all over the place. Diego, number two, can manipulate thrown objects while they're in flight. Reminds me of Gambit, except without the explosions, if you're a comic book fan. He's played by David Castaneda. Allison, I heard a rumor that you're going to subscribe to Fan Dummies. That'll get millions of subscribes. Number three, can influence people or reality by saying, I heard a rumor that. And by reality, it means that even if it's not physically possible, it still works. If she says, I heard a rumor that uh, you went back in time five minutes, you would go back in time five minutes. So it doesn't matter if you can do it or not. She's played by Emmy Raven Lampman. You know, she was in the original cast of Hamilton, which I always like to say because Hamilton's super popular. Klaus, the star of this thing, in my (laughs) opinion. Number four, he can speak to the dead. He's played by Robert Sheehan. This guy is going to make millions of dollars per movie after this. (laughs) I mean, he's just a genius. Number five can manipulate space and time. He time travels and transports objects. He's played by Aiden Gallagher, also a friggin' genius. Mm -hmm. I mean, for how young this guy is, he's got a huge career ahead of him. So, so awesome. Ben, AKA number six, he's dead, can summon tentacles from other dimensions through his skin. He's basically Klaus's right-hand man, except for being dead. He's played by Justin H. Min. And then, of course, Vanya, number seven, the white violin. She converts sound into energy. Played by Ellen Page, who I'm sure everyone knows. You've seen her in Juno, uh, Inception, the X-Men movies, a bunch of stuff. She's a big star. Any other people I missed? Mm. I think that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's the main Umbrella Academy yeah. member. So, yeah. We didn't talk about Sir Hargreaves, but everybody yeah, knows who dad. that is, I think. There's a lot of new characters in season two. Yeah. So many new ones. Thank God. Uh-huh. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of these are really good additions. I think one of my favorite new additions is Lila, and she's played by Rita Ara. Mm hmm. And she's the chameleon character that we talked about in our previous episode. And we didn't really understand, I guess, what her being a chameleon meant. But we learn in this new season that she can, you know, mimic everyone else's superpowers. That is a very cool superpower. Uh Uh-huh. She can do it all. (laughs) Yeah. Or nothing if (laughs) if there's no superpower people around her. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lila is Diego's love interest pretty much the entire season. It's a little bit on and off, but I think Diego really likes her, and I think Lila really likes Diego. Yeah, yeah, they're they're definitely in love. But it, it turns out to be a little awkward because by the end of the season, we find out that Lila is one of the 43 children mm-hmm. that were born that day together. And so it's like another brother and sister story all over. I mean, it sounds a little familiar, Luther and Allison. I know. It's, I mean, I don't know what you expect. I think, <laughs> I think the nice thing is, is they're not biological brother and mm-hmm. sister. They're, they have different moms. Yeah. Which is good. Whatever alien thing made all these 43 women pregnant at the same time, they definitely use DNA of the mom because they all integrated into the family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's not in the comics. I thought that was interesting, so I popped that in here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And you might have seen her in Doctor Who or in Sherlock. And one little fun fact about her is she's going to be in an upcoming movie that comes out in 2021. It's called Red Knot. And I bring this up because The Rock is in it. He's like the top guy. Gal Gadot, you know, a.k.a. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, a.k.a. Deadpool and Green Lantern. No. (laughs) 
Is it a comedy? No, it's, this is the description. An Interpol agent tracks the world's most wanted art thief. I was just joking to myself, like, maybe her next acting job is she's going to be a superhero. Because she's working with all these superheroes. And also, Russ Hanneman from Silicon Valley is in this. And he has voiced the Green Arrow in Justice League action show. Which I thought that was too crazy not to mention. So I'm kind of looking forward to that movie. I don't know if it falls in our category of what we will talk about on the podcast, but it, it seems like it might be a fun movie to watch. We'll talk to you about it on Twitter, though. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you want. <laughs> so That's really great. Yeah, I thought that was neat. Super fun. Another new character is Yusuf Gatewood. And he plays Raymond Chestnut. Mm. And Allison ends up marrying him in the 60s. I thought this was so funny because Aaron's kind of salty about Allison. <laughs> so she's like, Allison, keep it in your pants. <laughs> the uh, Because, you know, she's all over her brother, number one. Yeah. She runs off and does whatever and has a kid. Yeah, she's married. She has a kid with somebody else. Yeah, in the real in real yeah. life or in the current present. And then she also likes Luther, her brother. Then she goes back in time and then like in a year They're she's hitched. Separate. They're not even separated for that long. I know. <laughs> it's it's uh hey, you know? Yeah. His character is kind of interesting to me because in the sixties, that's when all the civil rights movements were going on. He was a civil rights activist in the show. And he doesn't actually know that Allison has her abilities, which I thought was kind of weird, too. And he ends up learning about her abilities towards the end of the show. And I guess he does accept her for them. He helps her get back to her original time. Yeah, this is a but, this is an amazing character. Very, very complex for how much uh, he's on screen. Mm-hmm. Very sweet. Totally in love with Allison. And I think she really loves him. I, mm-hmm. I think that these other relationships, maybe she just wasn't a hundred percent committed and she's so in love with with Ray Mm -hmm. and you know, he's, he's just an amazing guy, has an amazing cause, you know, does tries to make the world a better place, accepts her for who she is. Even when he finds out she's got some crazy brothers. (laughs) And when the brothers kept appearing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's like, what? It's like, (laughs) You might have seen Yusuf in the originals, and he also played Famine in the Good Omens Amazon Prime show. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now that you say that, I totally remember it. There was also Marin Ireland who plays Sissy, and this is, again, basically the same story. Oh, yeah. I mean, Vanya falls in love this time with Sissy. and Instead of Harold. Instead of Harold. And causes a bunch of trouble. It's really strange. I like this relationship much better. I think Sissy is kind of oppressed in her current living conditions. And she's not really seen by her husband. And she's got challenging medical condition with her with her child. And of course, Vanya is from the future. She understands a lot of things. Lifestyles are much more accepted. And... She wants Sissy to be happy. And it's just a really, a really amazing kind of love story that feels very real life. Mm-hmm. Not so much the 60s, but, but something that could have happened in the 60s, which I liked. You're going to see Marin in the upcoming Why the Last Man TV series. That is on your homework, by the yeah. way. <laughs> I would buy the comic books and read them. Because there's a ton of them, and they are amazing. I think it's on FX, if I remember correctly. But she's going to play Nora in that show. Mm -hmm. There's also Stephen Bogart, who plays Carl Hopper, who's Sissy's husband. He does an amazing job, too. Like You feel like he thinks he's doing what's right for his family. Like He's just been indoctrinated into the culture of the time Mm -hmm. and, and just doesn't really know what to do. He's just doing what he thinks is best. It's a clever character. I'll say it that way. You have Sissy's son who is played by Justin Paul Kelly and his name is Harlan in the show. Harlan is autistic. It looks like Mm -hmm. you don't really 
they don't really come out and say it. But Justin Paul Kelly is mostly known for voicing Chase on Paul Patrol, which is a big show. <laughs> I only know who Chase on Paw Patrol is because I have the Pez dispenser. Yeah. <laughs> Vanya saves him from drowning and a little bit of her schmegma goes into him and he absorbs her powers and gets her abilities or something very close to her abilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, that ain't going to happen in today's world because everybody has to wear a mask. So, yeah, Vanya's not going to be able to spew both the Virai and her powers out to anyone else. (laughs) It seems like if she were to save you or spew her Virai out, you would heal right away because she's so powerful. True. It also begs the question if these superpower people can superpower new people. Yeah. Right? Huh. I mean, why don't like they just go around them? and be like, you get a superpower, you get a superpower, you get a superpower. Not you. Mm-mm. Like, you got shifty eyes. Not you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe they will. Like, maybe they have powers they don't even understand yet. Ooh. I like this. Oh. Well, there's also the Swedish assassin trio, and they take place of Hazel and Cha-Cha, which I kind of miss Hazel and Cha-Cha. Again, the same exact story. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost the exact same. mm -hmm. They seem a little bit more murdery. I know Hazel and Cha-Cha have killed a lot of people, but we see a lot more murdery scenarios, I think, in this this one. I don't know. Yeah, the Swedes don't play around. It was a little freaky. <laughs> like, there's no donut lady seducing a Swede. Oh, I like the donut lady. They're actually all Canadian in real life. They're not even Swedish. I feel cheated. Uh-huh. I mean, couldn't they have hired some actual Swedish people? Yeah. No, that never happens. It's always the, uh, you never know where they're from. They just, they're just good at the. That's why they're actors. Yeah, that's, they're really good at it. <laughs> First off, there's Chris Holden Reed, and he plays Axel. And you might have seen him in The Expanse. What? He was Coop, a refugee from Ganymede, and I had to look him up. So, basically, he was an extra. Yeah, he did, Yeah, <laughs> he had a little bit of a role. He oh, was yeah. in a few episodes. He was also in the Vikings show. That's real popular, too. Yeah. We watched some of that. And then there's Jason Brighton. He plays Otto. Okay. And you might have seen him in one episode of Stargate SG-1. Ooh. I put that one in there for you, Greg. Nice. Greg's wearing a Stargate shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what world it's connected to. Um, the Umbrella Academy. Go straight there. I just have to, you know, like, is it going through me? <laughs> <laughs> and he was also in one episode of The Sanctuary and one episode of Supernatural. All shows we watch. Yeah. 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 These last two Swedish assassins, they've been in a lot of shows or movies but this last guy tom sinclair he plays oscar he was the one with the bloody milkman uniform Mm -hmm. i thought that was a little creepy yeah and he's the one that actually gets blown up by the tripwire and then his brothers give his leg the viking funeral (laughs) awesome it's awesome but he's pretty much new to the acting world he's been in like one thing before like some kind of looked like a documentary Hmm. but and last and probably I don't know if he's my favorite, but I think he's the most interesting new character <laughs> is AJ Carmichael. Yeah. You know, the goldfish guy. So he's pretty much just a person with like a goldfish bowl on his head, but it kind of looks like a, it reminds me of like a nautical helmet, I guess, like a vintage nautical helmet or something. And then they put the fish in there, which is, I don't know how it works, but it does. <laughs> yeah. He's basically a smart goldfish. Mm-hmm. And he controls a robotic body. Mm-hmm. But he's just in the water. Like there's no like little like, mm-hmm. choo, 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 like he's not driving the body. And he's voiced by Robin Atkin Downs. Nice. And he's a pretty popular voice actor. He's done a lot. Like he did a voice for Voltron. Ooh. So I had to throw that one in for Greg. <laughs> Spoilers. He gets eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to get eaten like... Pretty much right off the bat. Like, what? I thought Five might have, was going to eat him or something. And yeah. uh, I was like, why doesn't he just eat him and, like, just get it over with? <laughs> well, in the in the comics, Five does eat him. Oh, does he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how he kills him in the comics. 
Before we move on to what we thought about the Umbrella Academy season two, let's talk about the Fandummies Patreon. If you'd like to support Fandummies, which we would appreciate it, check out our Patreon. You can sign up for our basic tier, which is called Pumpkin Spice Latte, you know, because you're basic. (laughs) And you get early access, ad-free, and extended episodes of the audio podcast directly to your favorite podcast app. So you'll get a RSS feed that's all yours, and you can go to Overcast or CastBox or Apple Podcasts or whatever you want and just say, add feed, paste it in, boom, right on your nightstand when you wake up in the morning. Fan dummies. Just go to patreon.com forward slash fan dummies or click the link in the show notes below. You going to click the link, Aaron? Yes. 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 We would definitely appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Are you ready to get into what we liked and what we didn't like about the show? I wish we would. I've been holding my tongue this whole time. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. People are like, get on with it. I really enjoyed the choreographed music scenes. Like when they would like be fighting or, you know, something would be going on and then they would play the music. And sometimes they were covers of songs, which I really liked as well. Yeah. It kind of felt Mm Matrix-y a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And the cinematography of the show, especially I thought in season two, was just great. They don't just set up the camera and just shoot it. I mean, it's all like really thought out and I really like the way like it's shot. Yeah, it's got a color grading to it also Mm -hmm. that I think is a little bit unique. I mean, Netflix shows, they all have this like color grade to them that's kind of unique for the show. Either they pop bright colors or or it's like all like dark tones. The color is very thought out on this. Mm-hmm. I like the story of season two a mm-hmm. lot better than season one. Like I found myself going, oh man, let's keep watching these. Like I know we watched a couple of them in a row. Even though it was really similar to season one, I think that season two was uh, a lot better. Yeah. And I really like the Diego and Lila story arc. I guess in season one, I mean, Diego, he had a pretty big role, but it seemed like he really stepped up and his role in season two was a lot more. And the fact that he gets a love story, I think you see a different side of Diego as well. He takes a more strategic role. Like he goes to the commission and like steals their data. It's pretty good. Uh He does a nice job. And I love how Five always calls him their their simple brother. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. I also really liked how in this season that all of the siblings were separated. And it gave them a chance to find themselves, I think. Since they were able to find themselves, I think it made them a lot happier when they were to see each other again. Because, I mean, season one, they were kind of just like, ugh, like, you know, I don't like you, but we're, you know, brother and sister, let's work together. Yeah. And this season, it actually felt like they were happy to see each other once they were reunited again. And I really liked that. Mm -hmm. I didn't really like how murdery the Swedes were. They were very (laughs) murdery. When there was no murder snuggles going on, it was just all murder. (laughs) Exactly. It was just a little freaky. But that's about it. I mean, I really enjoyed season two of the Umbrella Academy. Yeah. What did you think, Ray? For me, the time travel is especially fun. Mm -hmm. I love when future people have to live in the past. I like seeing them have to deal with current conditions, both society and technological. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. (laughs) Klaus and Ben were magnificent. I think Klaus is the star Uh of the Umbrella Academy. Uh I love how Klaus started a cult. I think it's so Klausy of him, like just to accidentally start a cult. Yeah, it's like he wasn't even trying. Was yeah, he? <laughs> just he's just trying to have fun. And he embraced the 60s like none of the other people did. Mm-hmm. Like Allison kind of did, but not like Klaus. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was loving the 60s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is normal for him because he transported back to the 70s already once. Oh, yeah. And, you know, fought in Vietnam, fell in love, you know, had a loss. All sorts of fun things. I really thought Sir Hargreaves 
got way more interesting. Oh, yeah. Way more interesting. We got to see him rip off his skin and kill some people. <laughs> and He shanked Diego. All really fun. Yeah, at first, when I guess we found out that Sir Hargreaves was going to be in season two, mm -hmm. I was like, what? That's kind of... Like, yeah, how is that possible? Like, yeah. Well, I guess they go back in time. Yeah. And we would see him, but I was just kind of like, Ugh. I didn't really like him in season one, I guess, a whole lot. Yeah. But then once we got to know him, yeah, we found out, you know, who he was working with and who he actually is. I was like, oh, this is actually pretty neat. Reggie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> him being part of the Majestic 12 is also very fun. Yeah. The Majestic 12, for those of you who don't know, it's a conspiracy theory that essentially 12 people run the world. It's called the Majestic 12. It's been debunked a bunch of times, so I don't think it's actually real, but it's fun to think about. And one of them was an actual blues brother. What? I don't know if you caught that. I, he was dressed like a blues <laughs> brother. <laughs> I like that we got some insight into the other kids with powers. Oh, yeah. Right? Like the fact that Lila was there and Harlan. We know that something's going on with Harlan. We'll mm -hmm. talk about more in the next segment. But... uh yeah, I can't wait to learn more about him. I hated the Swedes. I hated the fact that this is the exact same story down to the plot points. <laughs> Vanya falls in love. They're being chased by killers. The Swedes this time instead of Hazel and Cha-Cha, which Hazel and Cha-Cha were much more interesting. Angst between Luther and Allison's love life and Allison's love life. All right, so we got angst about that. Actually, Diego did have a love interest in season one, remember? Who did he have? If she was a detective or worked for the police department. Oh, right, and got killed. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right uh, away by Hazel Cha -Cha. and Cha-Cha. Cha-Cha killed her. Yeah. And then he got really sad about it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the, the story is nearly identical, mm -hmm. with just a very few new things, I thought, which, you know, was a little bit weird you know there's still an apocalypse yeah they're still trying to stop the apocalypse that's coming same old same old basically it was like every x-men movie we've ever seen like when it continually gets redone just a little bit different but it's the same <laughs> story or the fantastic four movies like it's it's the same story over and over just a little bit different it seemed like a remake to me mm -hmm. i have to say though it was 10 times better oh, yeah. than season one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought season one was kind of slow. I'm sure if you rewind and go back to, you know, episode 89 or wherever the Umbrella Academy season one was, I probably said that same thing. I can't remember. Yeah, but we did talk about if we liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I did think I caught an error, though, <laughs> which is pretty cool. After Allison killed one of the Swedes in their living room, Klaus and Five jumped in to their, you know, Allison and Ray's living room in order to pick up Allison so they could go back to the future. Back in time. <laughs> and Ray says, your other brother just beamed into our living room. Well, if this was truly 1963, Star Trek and beaming didn't come out till 1966. Uh-oh. So Ray is also a time traveler. He has watched Star Trek and then gone back in time also. That's the theory. Uh -oh. <laughs> I didn't see that caught on any other reviews. So boom, caught it here first. <laughs> That's when the nerdiness really comes out. Gosh. <laughs> caught a Star Trek error. <laughs> Let's move on to the last episode. Of course, there's another cliffhanger. The team finally gets a briefcase and travels back to the present. They land in their old home only to find Reginald Hargreaves alive and different people living there. This is the best part. <laughs> this makes the cliffhanger to me like it's fine. Like they can cliffhang this all they want. Yeah. Because so thought... the story wrapped up. Uh -huh. It's just the cliffhanger is a start of a new story, yeah, which yeah. is how all cliffhangers should be. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They did the cliffhanger correctly. Yeah. The Umbrella Academy is now the Sparrow Academy. I mean, first a dumb name, then a second dumb name. No, I like it. It's birds. I love birds. <laughs> Best of all, Brother Ben is still alive. And when he appeared, I was like, yes. I don't know. Like, I really like his dynamic with Klaus. Like, I just love that. And Didn't love the emo hairstyle, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Now that he's back, he seems like a different person, though. 
He for sure is. If I was Allison, I'd be like, I heard a rumor you got a haircut. Ah, he had like. <laughs> He has like a scar on his face and mm-hmm. he had emo hair. But the only problem is Ben doesn't know who his brothers and sisters are anymore. Yeah, it's because they're not his brothers and sisters anymore. <laughs> so, Greg, why do you think the timeline changed so much? Oh, I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's pretty simple. They go to the past. They meet Reggie. Sir Reginald Hargreaves, they interact with their mom, Mm -hmm. not the Android version, but the alive version. And Hargreaves is disappointed in Uh him. (laughs) Like he's just like, oh, I messed up. And he's taking the opportunity to change his mind. Yeah. So basically, I think he went out of his way to choose different children. And since he didn't know Ben, Ben was already dead. Yeah. And he chose Ben. Yeah. Weren't they trying to get Klaus to have Ben appear and he wouldn't? Mm -hmm. So he didn't know him. Didn't know him. (laughs) That's my theory too. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's just too pumpkin spice latte-y, but that's what I thought. (laughs) I think think it's the only reasonable explanation. The other thing is, is that everything the Umbrella Academy achieved, so Mm -hmm. all the stuff that happened that, you know, when they were kids, they fought crime. So did those same things happen with the Sparrow Academy? That's going to be interesting to know. Probably. Who knows? I mean, Ben had the scar, so it looks like he's, you know, been in battle. Yeah, but who knows if it's the same stuff? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, this certainly sets up for an interesting season three. I'll say. I can't wait. Me too. I sure hope it gets picked up for another season. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read the comics this time, though. Go I'm gonna back try and to, read them all. Yeah, I'm going to try to read them all uh-huh. because the story's so different that you can get more Umbrella Academy mm-hmm. by reading the comics. Yeah. I really like the art of the comics, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. Greg does have the first comic. Yeah. yeah. The first appearance of the Umbrella Academy was on free comic book day. And uh, I have a copy. Except for it wasn't free. <laughs> yeah, except it wasn't free. I didn't. I bought it after. But one of the good things about it, it was never stamped. So the the comic book store is supposed to stamp their stamp in this square, because free comic book day is supposed to be like a a sales promotion for for both the comic and the comic store. Oh. Uh-huh. So they would stamp in that square, so that you know when your free comic is laying around your house, you know you got it from. Wherever. I don't think I've ever seen a free comic stamped. At least not at the store we shop at. Well, no, they would never do it because... It ruins the comic. <laughs> because they uh, they love comics. But when you look on eBay, 99% of them are stamped. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, it's fun. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, you can always go to our YouTube channel and see what we're talking about. And I'll show it to you again. Boom. And this thing is, I think it's actually worth quite a bit of money, like maybe 40, 50 bucks. Wow. But yeah, we'll put, we'll, we'll also post on our Instagram and, and Facebook and all that a picture as you can see. That's cool. So Greg, what do you think season three is going to be about? Well, this is pure speculation, mm-hmm. but Volume three of the Umbrella Academy is called Hotel Oblivion. And Hotel Oblivion is an interdimensional prison located on the dark side of the moon. Mm -hmm. So we get a little bit of flavor for this in season two because the Majestic 12 tells Hargreave right before he kills them all, you know, if you don't keep giving us this rocket technology, we're going to tell the world what you've got going on on the dark side of the moon, which tells me we are going to see some Hotel Oblivion in season two three yeah now i don't think the whole show will be about hotel oblivion i think it's going to be a little bit of the sparrow academy and volume four of the comics that gerard way is still writing apparently it's not out yet it's called sparrow academy yeah this blows my mind (laughs) so i really do think that season three is going to be a mix of hotel oblivion and some of the sparrow academy if i were to just speculate what's going to happen. I think the team is going to try to integrate back into normal life. 
and just accept that they're no longer the Umbrella Academy mm -hmm. and they're going to start doing some investigation, they're going to go to the moon and look around and they're going to find this hotel, this prison, and something's going to happen and these inmates are going to get out and they're going to have to fight like, like superheroes. The Sparrow Academy and the Umbrella Academy are going to team up to fight them? I don't know if they'll team up, but I think that they're going to it's both be have the same goals. all over again? Not apocalypse, but I think it's going to be more <laughs> superhero, supervillain. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to think the Umbrella Academy, they've seen a lot. Like, they can fight. And who knows how good or bad the Sparrow Academy is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? I'm pretty excited for the Sparrow Academy to find out who these people are and their powers. Yes. And because I really like the Umbrella Academy characters, but I think after two seasons, it's time for something, freshen it up, like, you know, integrate some new characters and with some superpowers. I'm all about the superheroes. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I was thinking last night that, like, why don't they just jump back in time? Because they have the briefcase once they get, you know, to present time and they find out that the Sparrow Academy is there. Like, why don't they just, you know, grab the briefcase and, and go back? But then that doesn't really make sense again because they would have to go back and try to fix the timeline. Yeah. And I think that would just be too complicated. They do have to stay in the present day. And I'm hoping that we will see them team up with the Sparrow Academy and maybe like they'll probably not get along at first. But I'm thinking that, you know, eventually they'll be like, okay, we are actually brothers and sisters. Yeah, I um, hope so. You know, let's team up and fight these super villains. But I would bet Hargreaves told them about the Umbrella Academy, about the first loser group. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to have a chip on their shoulder about uh -huh. them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty excited for season three. Me too. And at the end of the Hotel Oblivion comic, we do get to see like a page of what the Sparrow Academy looks like in the comics. And we do see them wearing, you know, super, super outfits. Super outfits. Yeah. Spandex and capes and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> the show and the comics aren't really that similar, but it kind of, you know, gives you an idea of, I think that they will be, you know, yeah. still into crime fighting. Like you were saying, like, would they still be out fighting? And uh, so hopefully we'll see that. Yep. So do you think we're going to get a season three? I definitely think so. And every news outlet seems to think it's a sure thing. I mean, even showrunner Steve Blackman told <laughs> townandcountrymagazine.com, if we're lucky enough to have a season three, I have a very amazing season worked out. That's awesome. It's going to be great. And we have a worthy cliffhanger of what will hopefully be a very worthy season, but it will be different than what we've come to expect from the show. We'll see more and more of this wonderful dysfunctional family in a world that has changed for them. It's not their house anymore and their dad's alive and he's not supposed to be. Yeah. Things obviously will be very different. And we'll put the link to this whole article. It's a good article. It talks about the future. I like the fact that the Sparrow Academy, that third book isn't even written yet. Me too. Me too. If they can do anything with it. Yeah, I know. it's gonna be fun. I mean, there has to be a season three. I think that this season was just too great yeah. for them not to pick it up again. I agree. Anything else you want to say about season two of the Umbrella Academy? One of the very few shows where the second season's better than the first. Oh, yeah. Doesn't happen very often. Yeah. It's going to be good. I think that too. <laughs> it's going to continually get better. Well, thanks for listening to this episode of Fan Dummies. Please subscribe, rate, and write us a review if you haven't already. As always, links to our Patreon, our Facebook group, and our merch store will be in the show notes. If you want to get cool shirts like Greg's wearing Stargate, I'm repping my uh, Team Valor Pokemon Go t-shirt. Nice. You can get shirts like that on Tee Public. Yeah, or you can get our Fan Dummies shirt, like our yeah. actual Fan Dummies merch. Yeah, we have a logo shirt and we have uh, a panda and an alien shirt. Yeah. Be fun. Those are fun. I need to order myself a Fan Dummies logo shirt. Yeah, I could use an alien shirt. <laughs> but if you want to reach out to us, we are at Fan Dummies on all social media. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, 
just head on over to our YouTube channel, Fan Dummies. I mean, pretty easy to find. And you can see the comic that we're talking about. I'll show it to you one more. <laughs> that just got devalued $5. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>